Hello my YouTube friends, glad you could join me today. I got some uh, exciting updates and uh, I just want to tell you kind of what's been going on. So uh, to start with, I, uh, I got some calls to do some work in one of the uh, um, campgrounds and uh, to work on some of the large RVs, uh, particularly structurally. And uh, of course when I got started on one, um, they all came around and I think I got a half a dozen people lined up now that want me to do work. Uh, but I'm finding some very interesting things, uh, common uh, problems with these RVs. And uh, as you can imagine, most of them, uh, somehow they end up starting to get water to go down in between the walls. There's a leak in the roof or there's something that is uh, cracked or, or it could be a vent or a window. But something is allowing water to get into the wall, which then drains down to the bottom of the RV, where uh, the uh, bottom plate for the stud walls uh, is located and in the ones I've looked at so far these plates rot away and that causes your whole entire wall to start sagging and if it's left long enough then the little studs will also rot away and then you've got a real problem I've got such a situation right now and I'm actually going to have to remove part of the skin on the outside to actually get at the studs I can't get at it from the inside because uh, the kitchen is there uh, anyway, so um, I started to look at the way that these RVs are built and as you can probably imagine they are really built with the uh, least expensive materials that they can find. It's, it's really a shame. They look really good on the outside and they look really good when they're new. Um, but if any of you have leaks in your RVs you know that it is a disaster and you can't get them stopped and it starts to rot your whole entire trailer away. And uh, so, as you know, I've been working with Aircrate, and it got me inspired to look at rebuilding a trailer from the floor up, actually replace the floor as well, put new walls on out of Aircrete with uh, steel studs and, uh, and a roof as well. And um, so that's one of the projects that I uh, started to uh, look at. Uh, I was thinking of doing, uh, you know, a large trailer, uh, maybe a, a 35 or a 39 footer. Um, but as it turns out, um, last year my landlord dropped off a trailer that he found on the side of the road. It's a 14-footer, uh, and the shell is, is gone. It's, in fact, I had begun to strip it down, thinking that I was going to turn it into a flat deck. Um, but then when I looked inside of it a little more closely, it's, it's got all the fixtures uh, in terms of uh, furnace and, and uh, oven and, and fridge and stuff like that that is actually in good shape, that hasn't been damaged. And um, so I started thinking, well, maybe that's the baby step to take and to start with this 14-footer and, uh, and see what kind of uh, results I get. Now, the whole project, I mean, it, to some this might seem like a, a fool's errand, uh, and maybe it is, uh, time will tell, when, uh, depending on, on how far we get into it. Uh, but at the same time, it could also be a... Um, a very unique solution to a lot of these uh, these failing trailers. Uh, so basically my idea is to uh, to use aircrete panels um, approximately two feet wide. For the floor I will use um, uh, steel studs on on each side of the panel and so when they are installed side by side I'm gonna have a double steel stud so to speak as one stud will uh, from one panel will be joined to the stud of the next panel. Uh, and then put aircrete in between uh, with the wire mesh and uh, uh, of course for the floor I'm just going to use 2x4 and then uh, I will um, uh, uh, put plywood on top of that and I can put the flooring on that and uh, as far as the uh, walls go uh, I'll probably use inch and a half steel studs and then uh, put uh, quarter inch plywood on uh, like subfloor plywood on the inside and, and paint that and on the outside because I'm working with these RVs I've come across a product it's actually used to repair the roofs of the RVs and it's uh, a liquid silicone white. It comes out like a silicone skin. Uh, you can basically make it as thick as you want. And uh, so on the outside I will be covering the whole entire trailer in, uh, in the silicone uh, skin. And uh, on the roof I think I'm going to use the, um, the, the, the uh, rolls of um, of asphalt that you can use for your uh, for the ridge cap they're about four feet wide or three feet wide I think 
and uh, and uh, they uh, they come in like 25 or 27 feet and uh, so I figured I'll put a couple of strips of that on the top and I'll probably even put that underneath um, just as an extra protective layer anyway um, if it all works out then I should end up with a really nice trailer that is virtually rot proof um, it shouldn't leak in the first place but if it does uh, it's not going to rot out my walls. Uh, it's going to be something that's going to be able to get addressed very quickly uh, before it becomes a problem. And uh, I think that uh, it, it's, it's going to prove itself to be a solution uh, to some of these older trailers that are, uh, you know, beyond, beyond repair. And the thing of it is, there's such a demand for these trailers right now. Um, it seems like a trailer that was worth five hundred dollars last fall is is worth almost five thousand now. Um, so, uh, and also of course this is uh, sort of a forerunner of the tiny house which I have in mind for the future. Um, but uh, again, we got to take baby steps, and uh, so this is a project that uh, well I've got the trailer, and uh, I figured I did a bit of a cost analysis. It looks like it's going to be about two thousand dollars on material. Uh, to rebuild everything and then uh, I will use the furnishings that are in there the, the stove and the furnace and that sort of thing and uh, yeah so we'll see how that goes so if you uh, if you want to follow along uh, I've got a little video in the end there showing what kind of shape it is in right now and uh, I agree it takes a lot of vision and a lot of imagination and a lot of faith and optimism to uh, to, to actually uh, uh, see, see this project be completed. But uh, hey, I like a challenge and I like to do things that I've never done before. So I could end up just hooking it up to my truck and taking it straight to the dump and forgetting about it. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think that I'm going to learn a lot and I think that uh, it's going to be a very rewarding, uh, rewarding experience. So, um, as well as I promised last time, I, I've got a little video here on, on the uh, Aircrete machine that I've made, the mixer. And uh, I, I go through a bit of a detail on it. If you've got any questions about that, leave, leave them in the comments. I'd be glad to, uh, to look at them and answer them. And, uh, yeah, so um, uh, once I get uh, the panel started and I start to make Aircrete, I will make a video of, uh, of actually making the Aircrete with machine in it it being coming out of the hose and that sort of thing uh, but that's going to be a little ways down the road um, but uh, yeah in the meantime I, if you uh, if you want to follow along I suggest that you subscribe so that you get uh, the latest videos and uh, I always appreciate it if you can like the video because it uh, helps spread it around and um, share it if you can and uh, by all means leave a comment uh, I, I love to hear your feedback and uh, and your encouragement uh, so uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll uh, leave it at that, and uh, we'll catch up with you at the end of the video. All right, so there is my very crude aircrete mixer. Now, at one point in time, I had used this to, uh, I had sand in there, and I used it to tumble, let it go round and round with sand in it, to uh, polish uh, a piece of steel or a piece of wood or that sort of thing. I'm going to just go see if I can get inside here for a minute. You can see there's a just a noodle that I've screwed in. There's another one on the opposite side. There we go. And uh, that actually is working very well for the mixing. So on this end, I've taken the lid off so I can show you inside, but uh, let me put the lid on for a minute. There, so there's the lid installed. Now I just got plastic, which I got uh, fastened with the ring in the inside and sealed off with silicone. I only put 10 pounds pressure in here and I figured this is kind of my safety valve, so if something went wrong, the pressure got too high, it's likely going to blow that piece of plastic before anything else. But uh, so far it hasn't done that. So uh, what I've got here is, uh, if I spin this thing around for a minute here, I've got just an ordinary peanut butter jar, plastic one, that I put in with uh, hot glue. And I can just take the cap off and then I have access to fill it. So in order to fill it uh, with water and cement, I've made this other little unit. So all that is was just a cheap stainless steel bowl. And as you can see, I've also just glued a lid on that and it just screws on and it allows me to pour the cement in without making a mess and to add the water. So once I, uh, I'll add the water first, 
then I'll add the Portland cement and then put the lid back on and let it spin around for a bit. So let me start it up and show you how it spins. So I understand this is a very crude setup. Uh, I got a gear down. See, I mean, that's pretty wobbly there. And it was almost, uh, or it was actually meant to be a, sort of a prototype for a tumbler. Uh, now that I've turned it into aircrete, I'm going to, uh, you know, set that properly. But the principle is there, so that's just a furnace motor, I think. I'm spinning a big wheel that then spins the the uh, barrel but it's uh it seems to be spinning at a right right speed there so uh as you can see this goes right in, and that would that would mix my water and portland cement into a nice slurry so if i let that go around for oh even a couple of minutes i don't think it has to go that long but once i do that then i'm able to add the foam so once the barrel is filled up with uh aircrete foam and i spin it again for two or three minutes then I can attach my hose, which is also on just another peanut butter lid. And uh, if I bring that down to the bottom, obviously. There we go. And then I've just got my hose. And then on this side here, I have air intake, which I would put my pressure regulator on. And uh, 10 pounds of pressure, I've, I've tested it. And it has no difficulty blowing that through the hose and uh, that's probably a 25 or 30 foot hose uh, but it has no difficulty blowing that out now getting it into the attic it may not have enough pressure for that in that case i would just pump this into my old pressure tank and then uh, and then switch the air and blow it from there so of course once the uh once the thing starts mixing, I can actually take this off and I have a little cap that I screw on there as well so I don't lose my, so Portland cement and slurry and stuff and uh, uh, foam doesn't get in there. Other, other than that, it's uh, very simple. I mean, I've just taken a bicycle wheel and screwed blocks. Now, I did have to go on the inside and, uh, and seal things up, like where these screws went through with a little bit of hot glue. Most of it I did with hot glue, a bit with silicone. I think I end up doing the, the lid here, the plastic I added, silicone. Um, but it doesn't leak. It's quite amazing. Now, I do have to tighten this lid up with a hammer and a board. And uh, I was thinking I'd probably uh, try to lubricate it up with a bit of bacon grease, actually, which should work pretty good. I don't need to open that once I'm operating the machine. Uh, it was just because I had used it for a tumbler, and, uh, and I wanted you to show the inside just the, uh, the the foam noodles and um, but they work well enough to uh, stir everything together and you get a very good consistent mixture and uh, of course the beauty of this is that it really reduces the mess so by just being able to add uh, Portland cement water and then add the Portland cement and let it actually get mixed inside the barrel uh, that saves a lot of splashing and getting dirty and that sort of thing and having to handle it and then of course putting the foam is, is very easy until the thing is full, turn it on and blow it out. It's, uh, it really has become a clean process. Now I'll probably build a steel frame for this and uh, set some bearings, maybe get a new wheel or two and uh, you know, set this all up a little bit better. But it, uh, yeah, it certainly, uh, certainly does the job. And uh, I think this is probably the beginning of something that uh, I could, uh, uh, make larger so even a, a 200 gallon tank in the future i don't see out of the question all right all right now for the trailer challenge now i know this looks very sad and that's exactly why i'm replacing it but actually that window is good all the windows are good the doors are good and uh but as you can see i started stripping it and uh inside as you can see it's got this nice little kitchen there see it's got a heater, it's actually got the hole for the toilet, fridge, and sink. And uh, once this all gets completely replaced, uh, it should really become quite a fantastic little unit. Uh, it's definitely a challenge, and uh, I'm going to have to learn as I go along. But that's the whole purpose of doing this. I totally understand that this could become a complete flop. But at the same time, it could also become a really fantastic project and uh, something that we can really enjoy. 
So yeah, in order in order to do these things, one's got to be able to uh, envision the finished product, and uh, I'm able to do that, and uh, I can see this being completed. So follow along as we. Uh, I'm going to strip this strip this down further, and uh, get it right down to the floor, and then build it right up from the floor. So. I'll be uh, posting updates and uh, hopefully you can follow along.